I gotta say it. I love smallmouth bass on the fly. This pattern, which I call the smallmouth gotcha, is great for covering hot spots or fishing along the bottom for sluggish fish. And it's got a ton of features I like in a pattern. Let's see how to tie it. We start our thread right towards the front of the bend on a jig hook. Make a bump of thread by wrapping thread over itself in the same place back and forth. Now place some bead chain eyes right behind the bump and attach them with crisscross wraps, etc. So use four eyes because I want the extra weight, but also, and just as importantly, I want these eyes to act as a rattle if I bounce the fly up and down underwater. Now wrap your thread to the back of the hook, laying a nice thread base, since we'll add some monofilament here. Make sure to wrap back and then back up to just behind the bead chain. This is something I like to do with quite a few of my patterns, but particularly with my smallmouth and largemouth gotchas. Take some mono and wrap it around the thread. I use 0.018 inch Rio Alloy Hard Saltwater Tippet, which is 16 pound. Then wrap down the mono until both tags are sticking out the back of the fly. Then I wrap back and forth to make sure this mono isn't going anywhere. After you've done this, wrap two to three silly legs around the thread, not the bobbin like I do here in Gilmer Pile fashion, but just tie them down so that they shoot out the back. Don't put too much pressure or you'll break them. Do the same thing with some gold holographic flash and use anywhere from three to five strands. I measure both of these out and cut them at the same length but not the mono. I usually cut them as long as the silly legs will go. Next, measure out some yellow marabou to about just over three quarters of the shank length. Just tie it down and cut the excess. I like to leave a little extra marabou to make sure that it'll last. Next comes some root beer chanel from Hairline. Pull a little bit of the chanel material off and then tie the chanel in. Bring your thread to about two thirds from the back, then make a little bump just like you did for the eyes. Now wrap some yellow rubber legs around the thread and tie back. As you tie back, the rubber legs should separate straight out because of the bump of thread. Nifty. Now advance your thread and take two wraps of thread around those rubber legs to keep them in place.
After this, wrap your chenille to just in front of the first set of rubber legs, making sure to pull the chenille back in between each wrap. Release the hounds, or at least your rubber legs, by reversing the thread wraps twice. Now finish wrapping your chanel forward to just behind the eyes. Take a few wraps and cut the chenille. Make some securing wraps toward the rear. Next, tie in another set of yellow rubber legs so that they are separated to each side. You're now ready to turn the fly over to tie in the craft fur. I like a nice long piece of extra select craft fur from Hairline, which should cover most of the fly, both length and widthwise. Set the craft fur on top and take a wrap or two and roll the craft fur into place as you are taking a few more wraps with the thread to secure it down. Sounds more complicated than it is. I also take a few wraps in front of the craft fur so that it doesn't pull forward when I cut it. Now cut as much of the craft fur as you can and make any touch up cuts and then take a few more wraps of thread. After this, lift the craft fur up and make lines across the craft fur with a brown marker which will wash out a little in the water. I like to start the lines closer together and space them out as I move toward the back of the fly. Now adjust the rubber legs as you turn the fly back around for the final major tying part of the fly. Bring the mono tags forward and take a few wraps around them. Then adjust the mono so that it makes a wide oval or heart shape. When everything looks good, tie it all down. To cut the mono, use some snippers. Normally, it's a clean snip, not a wobbly infant-like attempt here. Okay, it's cut. 
Now finish off the head and turn the fly around. Just a note here, I normally pull the rubber legs through when I'm done tying the fly so that it looks like this. You need to cut the rubber legs to length now. I do this by cutting one side so that it's about flush with the end of the yellow marabou. Then I use this side to measure out the other side. There are other ways to do this, but this works for me. But make sure to cut the second side on an angle so that the front one is longer. Now just cover any remaining fibers around the head with thread wraps. When the head looks good to you, just whip finish and cut the thread. I want this thread head so that the fly sinks easier and lets the eyes rattle as much as possible. Now coat the entire head with Zappy Gap. We want this baby to be rock solid. The final step for me is to trim the bottom so that the fly rides flush in the water. I tie this fly in a bunch of different colors, but this one works really well in most situations for smallies. We hope this fly catches you the biggest smallmouth of your life and would love to connect with you. Subscribe here if you want to see a lot more of these, and don't forget that on our site to flyfish.com we have a bunch of resources for not only smallmouth and other bass species, but for all types of fish species and flies.